Innovated is an eight-month incubation program. Seen the transformation of Innovated as well because uh, at that time it was just like an idea that was beginning to seed and sprout, and and now it's shifted to this entire incubation program. Hello, yours. Welcome to Get Another Chat on the Connect TV. Today we have Mr. Oshik Saha uh, with us. He's uh, from Teach for India uh, mission. In fact, I think it's a mission for education, um, and they also recently uh, has come up with a. An innovative idea called called Innovated Innovate and ED as you can see on the see on the screen. So welcome to the show, Mr. Saha. Thank you so much, Mr. Kumar. Uh, to begin with, uh, let's understand as to what is this Teach for India mission is all about and how did how did it all start, Mr. Saha? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so Teach for India is a non-profit organization um, who which focuses in the education sector. Uh, we started our organization back in 2009. Uh, it was started by uh, Ms. Shaheen Mistri, who is the founder of our organization. Um, so I think just to give you a little bit of background, in um, 2009, Shaheen was uh, outside studying, um, out studying in the US. But I think that's when she sort of uh, saw another person uh, who is Wendy Kopp, who is the founder of Teach for America. And uh, she was uh, she started this organization called Teach for America with a similar model, and that's what uh, Shaheen wanted to bring in India, okay. um, and that's how in 2019 she started the organization called Teach for India. Only way to get on a path to where we're trying to go is to have many many innovators and social entrepreneurs kind of breaking down the old paradigms and and pioneering new solutions. Our fellows have a generally a ratio of 35 children that they're responsible for. Uh, depending on the size of the classroom, uh, we allot the number of fellows. So if let's say a classroom is uh, around 100 students, so we'll try to at least allot, allot two to three fellows for that classroom. Okay. Um, it depends on the context though, to answer your question. So some class, dependent on the need of the classroom, uh, the subjects that are required to be taught, uh, based on that, the fellows are trained and allotted the subjects. Some are class teachers as well. Some are uh, some uh, teach a lot of different subjects. Um, so from grade second to grade tenth. What about the subjects that you teach? Because the syllabus from central to CBSC to local schools to you know the, 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 the syllabus totally varies, and uh, the background of the, the fellows that enter uh, Teach for India, their background is also totally could be totally different. So how the how how do you match this? Right. Thanks for the question. So I think um, so we have basic expectations that we have from the fellows, right? You have to be a graduate um, with some degree or the other. So without a graduation degree, uh, we don't allow uh, joining the fellowship. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. I was also myself a fellow in Mumbai. So 2016 to 18, um, I did the fellowship uh, in a low income uh, in a government school um, in Lower Pared, uh, which was also run by an NGO. Uh, so in terms of subjects that you asked, we are uh, open to any subject which are um, taught in English. So it could be social sciences, it could be um, it could be English, maths, it could be science. Uh, okay. And from grade second to grade 10, the training is provided at different grade levels. So let's say, uh, and we also have an institute before fellows join the fellowship. We have a one and a half months a full time institute where the entrepreneur, sorry, where the uh, fellows come the together. Yeah. I was teaching a classroom which had a lot of uh, communal issues. There were a lot of infighting in class. Kids never used to speak to each other. They did not speak to the other gender. They did not speak to kids from other classes. So we started this ultimate frisbee program where the kids just come together and play the sport. Ultimate frisbee is a self-refereed, non-contact 
team sport placed using a flying disc in a mixed gendered format maybe i think any organization you join um, or any new sort of city that you go to or any um, anything new i think comes with su- certain cultural clashes right and especially yes, yes. in school circumstances when there are fellows with who are fluent english speaking and coming from really sort of privileged backgrounds and uh, and also like not but again not all fellows come from privileged backgrounds but most of them i would say um, do like for example me as well right i i um, i myself i feel that uh, came from privileged background but uh, at the at the back end teach for india trains us to handle these situations as well and 2009 since 2009 we have been seeing this this is not some Once in a while, the all the fellows working in a particular area, they could be either getting together, Tom, because of the uh, COVID scenario, they could be getting coming together virtually or in a uh, small discussion kind of a scenario, and you could be changing notes like what happened in your class. It could be exactly. you know because this kind of an exchange of information uh, will help in you know um, uh, you know uh, meeting uh, surprises and shocks in future. So does okay. it happen? Yeah. um so i think um, covid was quite a, um, i think not just for us right for everyone uh, it's a big it learner was, it's a big learner it's yeah it's a big learning experience for all of us i think uh, with the school shutting down all of us um, at teach for india we pivoted and started supporting um, towards covid response because a lot of our students who we teach did not have access to technology so the yes. first um the first uh, important thing that we did was just helping uh, technology be distributed among all the students so that we can reach them even if the schools don't open so that was something that we were able to uh, meet well and now i can say that most of our students have a uh, technology at least a tablet or a phone that they have been using uh, and another thing i think so like the institute that we spoke about that's also happening in that used to happen in person so that was a yeah. shift we made so that became virtual um so the classroom also was like sort of um, in the last one and a half two years now is when the classrooms are opening right before that the classrooms have been mostly shut so uh, fellows have been teaching uh, through these uh, technology tools um, innovating and trying to get its different tools and structures um and yeah so far we have 4000 plus alums who have been um through the fellowship okay. and most of our alums stick to the so i would say like 70 plus percent of our alums stick to the education sector mm-hmm. um this is this answers the previous question that you also asked right about yeah, the alum what do them, they do yeah. correct what do they do right so we have seen that most of the organization because uh this leadership experience actually helps bring some change in the mindset helps bring uh, uh give them a ground of an awareness of the ground reality in india this new sort of version of innovate ad which opens it up really focus on alums experienced uh, teach for alums who are committed to setting up organization i think is the session was very involved particularly uh, i felt that every participant uh, was very energetic and interactive uh, a lot of our alumni who is working directly with the government okay. um, I, even our organization for example i like give an example of indian school of democracy which mm. has been a uh, innovated entrepreneur from 2019 cohort they are actually also working on building political leaders so like at different levels we do work with the government yes uh, and a corollary for us then is that every generation needs to have its own leaders Uh, but if we think of india today all our role models either come from bollywood cricket or business our goal is that by 2047 which is 100 years of independence 25% of elected representatives will be principal leaders yeah. so um, as i mentioned during the beginning of the call uh, we try one uh, fellow to be map to 35 students yeah. but over the years uh, through our alumni we have actually seen that we have been able to touch around 35 million children 
uh, and um, so that would mean uh, which is thousand x of thirty five, right? Almost. Uh, yeah. So, uh, like thirty five thousand uh, children, we sorry thirty two thousand children, we um, teach on a year on year basis through the fellows. Yeah. But over the last ten years and uh, through our alumni, we have actually supported around thirty two million children, which is thousand x of thirty two thousand. So one in every uh, ten children in India, uh, in some capacity or the other, is touched by. People who have been teach friendly fellows or alumni, so that's something that I just want to share before. We great, end. great. I think uh, it's great talking to you. Uh, we got a lot of insights, you know, for the people who are uninitiated about this kind of mission. It's a great uh, idea, working very well, and uh, uh, wish you all the best in your uh, future endeavors for inno innovated also. And yeah. uh, we will be in getting back to you, staying in touch with you. Uh, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Aushik, for your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you.